Thank you for your interest in this position and the time you invested in interview process. Unfortunately, we had to proceed with another candidate. This position requires someone with a stronger executive presence. We'd like to stay in touch in case a more suitable position will open up. Uh, wait a minute. I'm perfectly qualified for the job. I have a proven managerial experience and I am a confident leader. What do you mean executive presence? Well, you know, presence, a vibe of a leader. People have to feel it. And we didn't. Sorry. By the way, I can hardly imagine a conversation like that, mostly because companies rarely give a reason for rejection. You can maybe guess, but I'm not a native speaker. I remember when I first heard this term, executive presence, I didn't quite knew what that means. Hold that thoughts, we'll need it later. I wanna start with the statement. You do not have an executive presence because executive presence does not exist. Well, in a way, you can say, wait a minute, I feel different when I speak to top managers. They do have something special about their vibe. How can you say that it doesn't exist? Don't you worry, everything will be answered. And as a bonus, I will give you an interview strategy to appear as a more mature and confident leader. Let's go. Let's first look at two examples. Two directors, both of them want to hire, of course, a very cool candidate to their teams. Of course, with executive presence. But if you ask them to explain this in more details, to be more specific, you will see this. My perfect candidate should not get intimidated in front of a top managers because in our company they're quite pushy and should be able to insist on his or her opinions because in our culture everything is heavily challenged. My good candidate should be a smooth speaker because it's very important for this role and should be flexible and adaptive to different working styles and maintain a long-term relationship with our top management. So if I simplify, the the first ideal candidate should be tough, be able to defend opinions and lead the way, while second should be social and trustworthy and easy to connect and inspire. But wait a second, both directors just called it executive presence, and they both meant completely different qualities. How on earth a recruiter or a HR manager can find the right person based on this vague description? You guessed it, they won't or the choice of the candidate will be kind of random. That is the reason why the term executive presence in one of the biggest BS in corporate world. It is so abstract that it does not mean anything. Everyone imagines something different when hearing it and everyone convinced that people know what that is and everyone thinks the same. Unfortunately, that is not true, but that's not the worst part. Imagine our director gets a candidate and during the interview, he feels that something is off. He cannot quite put this into words. So his verdict rejects mm -hmm. because the candidate just doesn't feel like a leader, doesn't have an executive presence. This term that we just established can mean literally anything. Bear with me, it is worth highlighting this one more time. You got rejected because you don't fit an abstract concept that even the decision maker does not fully understand. And this is also not the worst part. Can you imagine a person who only saw male leaders or tall leaders, extroverted leaders? How objective and unbiased their judgment will be when they will start hiring others, especially when they have such a convenient argument to hide their biases. They can just say, she doesn't have an executive presence. Unfortunately, this is true. Many people, without realizing it, make a biased hiring decisions and don't even notice it behind the terminology that everyone pretends to understand. And what they do? They come up with the requirements on the go during the interview to justify this feeling that she does not feel right or she doesn't feel like a leader. I am an educational channel, hopefully, you tell me. Let's talk about what can we do about it. First, there are two sides here. The one if you hire to your team and the other one if you apply. And if you happen to be on the hiring position, I beg you, don't play these games with yourself, essentially. It's not wrong to look for someone with leadership qualities. 
and it is not wrong to reject someone if this person doesn't fit the role. But you have to be specific about what you're looking for. Take a minute and actually write down all the things that you mean by executive presence. If you do that, you will actually get a better candidate while being unbiased and inclusive. But what do you do if you're a candidate and you have to fight the system? You cannot influence a mind of a hiring manager if it's biased. Or can you? Here's my advice. Our goal here is to understand what exactly a hiring manager is looking for in a perfect candidate for this job. So during interview, we can do a small investigation and then try to reassure a hiring manager that we are the right person for the role. For example, on the interview, you can ask, what is expected from a leader in this position? Or what do you think is needed for a person to succeed in this job from a leadership point of view? It is absolutely fine to ask questions about this side of the role, including potential challenges. And through the answer, you will be able to make your own judgment of what executive presence means for this particular hiring manager, for this particular job. And then what you do is you confirm that you're capable and back it up with examples. Like this. I have a question. I'm curious about what leadership challenges a person would face in this role. What is needed to succeed on this position? Well, the team you'll have to lead is pretty mature and stable, but our top management is going through a lot of transformations right now, so they need someone who'd be able to lead this independently and allow them to focus on critical things. I understand. In my current role, I have a smaller team, but I operate fully independently. 95% of the issues were resolved within the team, but this 5% that actually requires an attention of our top managers is always escalated transparently. There you go. You got the insights about what is needed for the role and also confirmed that you can be the right person for this challenge. Don't fall into a trap of the vague terminology like executive presence. Thank you for watching and good luck!